talk about this manuscript, which, how does this work? Yeah. Um, which was uh, initially uh, published by, first written about, and then published by um, Professor Kuchanov. And the title, the Russian title, is which in English we could translate as Record at the Altar about Confucius's Conciliation. Um, it's very hard to explain what this means. What's Confucius's Conciliation? Um, and that's basically the, uh, the subject of my talk today. Um, he translated uh, the entire manuscript. This is a tangled manuscript. We'll see images of it uh, a little bit later. And then um, he provided a translation. In his translation, he noticed, <coughs> well, in his study that uh, came before the translation, he noticed how the text was similar to the Old Fisherman chapter of the Zhuangzi. And then he said, possibly this is another version of that encounter of Laozi. In that case, in the, in the Zhuangzi, he's just an old man and Confucius. And so he basically, especially when he first wrote about this, he titled his, um, his article, An Unknown Encounter of Laozi with Confucius. So it was actually quite widely read because people were interested in it. Um, later on, this was translated into uh, his book, well, translated is not a good, maybe not a good expression, it was, he was, it was published in Chinese. Um, so the, the authors are here, Kichanov and uh, Professor Nio Hongin. I'm not exactly sure how this book was put together because um, obviously the, um, well, there's a translation of Kuchanov's study at the beginning, but the text actually is a new translation. There's a transcription and translation into what we could call a reconstructive translation into classical Chinese, So, uh, which is customary to uh, Professor Nia's uh, method. He, he likes to kind of approximate the original Chinese that would have been there for the um, for the Tango translator. So there are these two studies, two books about this, and in both cases the, the title is the same. So we have the title, the Kongzi He Tan Ti, which is basically the um, Confucius at the altar of, and this could be translated maybe if we follow Kuchano as conciliation or achieving peace. Professor Nia, um, felt that also that this was a uh, this this word, uh, which is which appears in the Tango uh, to mean to make peace, uh, was a problem, and he suggested that maybe this meant to play music, the same way as the Chinese character um, could uh, could also refer to this. I think with the fourth tone, right? He, to accompany some somebody uh, on a musical instrument. Now this is, um, these are the last two pages of this manuscript and courtesy of um, Kirill and his team um, and uh, Dr. Popova and at the, at the end you, you have a colophon uh, where you have the date and also you have the title of the text and so the based on this, um, on this colophon we know what the original title was in Tango. And the original title was this. So it's the Gorno Guala. And in this, uh, this is what was translated into Chinese as this Kongzi He Tan Ti. So the date is 1122. The date cannot be seen properly. You only see fractions of it. But based on this, Professor Pichanov uh, worked out that it must have been 1122. And this date actually works very well for this text, and I will show you um, why in a little, a little bit later. Now, Nevsky who was the first one in the 1930s who, to work with this text. Um, he reconstructed, uh, he translated the title as this record 
at the altar about Confucius's conciliation. And then he reconstructed the original Chinese uh, based on the Tangled, which would have been Fu Zi Hu Tan Ti. So the, the master at the altar of reconciliation. And then uh, came Ke Chan Of, who basically accepted uh, Nevsky's translation, and he later changed uh, his translation a little bit, but basically it means um, more or less the same thing. The manuscript is known today uh, under this title. So the altar, well, Confucius at the altar of conciliation. This is how in Chinese it's known. And it basically does not match the, the, uh, the Tango title, interestingly, because the Tango says, as Nevsky already uh, pointed out, the first two characters, the uh, Gorno, two words actually don't mean Confucius, they mean the master. So the modern Chinese sort of customary way of calling this manuscript is actually not entirely correct. It's based on the fact that the title was translated back into Chinese from Russian. So first it was translated into Tangut, then from Tangut to Russian, from Russian back to Chinese. And, um, this is also, as we've seen earlier, the title of um, Professor Nia and Kuchanov's uh, work. But here it's not, it wasn't Professor Nia who called this, but uh, this title appeared initially in a translate, Chinese translation of Nevsky's works. So it all goes back to Nevsky. Now, the text that's connected with this in the Zhuangzi is in the Yu Fu, so the old fisherman uh, chapter. I have here an English translation. We don't need to look, read through this, but basically the beginning is interesting because it says, traveling at the forest of Ziwei, Confucius sat down to rest on the apricot uh, platform, or you could translate the, uh, that word as altar. His disciples studied while Confucius sang and accompanied himself on the Ziwei. Halfway through the tune, a fisherman got out of a boat and came over. And then he sends, Confucius sends over Zikung and Zilu, his two disciples, and they um, start talking to the, uh, to the old man. This chapter in the uh, Zhuangzi is actually not that long and does not really match the, the, uh, the Tango text. The beginning kind of matches, the whole situation is ma matches, but um, it's not entirely uh, the same. Also in the analects of uh, Confucius, we have a similar uh, setup. Basically, it's the same story. Um, I don't know if I have a translation, yes. Um, or si very similar story. And both of these uh, texts, so the Zhuangzi, which is a Taoist text, and the analects, which is a Confucian text, uh, together uh, seem to be related uh, to the Tango text. Now, Professor Nia noticed several things. He tried to date the text. First of all, he said, Kuchana is probably wrong in saying that this might, have, might be another version of the Zhuangzi, because uh, it, this text, this Tango text, probably goes back to a more recent um, precedent, to a more recent Chinese text. So he tried to date it, and then he said, well, in, there, was, there were bits of text in the commentary to the Yin Fu Ting, so a Taoist text. And uh, in this commentary was written by somebody in the 8th century, by Li Quan. And then the whole thing is quoted, actually, in a 16th century text. So that was one thing. The other thing, he said, it's not specifically Taoist. There are other elements in it, like Buddhist elements and even Confucian elements to the story. And then also, uh, one more thing, Confucius wears a sword in the text. So Confucius usually is very peaceful, he doesn't wear a sword, he doesn't, he doesn't fight. But in this text, he is um, this guy, well, when he's in conversation with, with the old man, he basically he wears a sword. Now, based on this, Professor Nier also said, well, in a depiction of Confucius from the 8th century uh, by 
very, very famous uh, painter, Wu Daozi, Confucius wears a sword. So this text must have been later than this. Of course, we don't have this later than uh, this picture. Of course, we don't have the picture. This is a much, much later uh, copy of the picture. So we don't actually know if uh, Wu Daozi really, well, he might have, um, he might have depicted or he might have drawn or painted uh, Confucius, but we don't know if it's the same picture or whether it's a later reconstruction. But basically, based on these things, um, Professor Nye, uh, like based on this date here, thought that probably the text um, was written sometime in the late Tang Dynasty or possibly later. Interestingly, um, I found a related text in this collection. This is a collection of Ming and Qing uh, scriptures related to uh, secret societies. So Chinese sectarian movements uh, from say the 15th to the 19th centuries. So in this collection, uh, which is called The Five Books and Six Volumes, the Wu Pu Liu Tzu by somebody called Luo Tzu, so Patriarch Luo, um, who was the founder of the Wu Wei Jiao sect or the non-action teachings, uh, he writes in one of the books, because these are five books in six volumes, so in one of the books, which is the longest book, which is called this, The Scroll of the Key to Destroying Heresy and Manifesting Evidence, um, he quotes a text called Lao Jun, uh, so record of the portable altar of the elderly lord. Now this is where it, uh, actually the quote is here. This is, he quotes only this much to, uh, from the text. It's about Zulu talking to the old man and asking him. I don't know if I would, yes I have the translation. So. Uh, so he bowed deeply and said, you must be a sage. The old man replied, um, we, okay, basically saying, yes, I'm a sage. Now, this text appears in the Wu Pu Liu Tzu, in this text uh, from the Chinese sectarian movements here. Fortunately for us, there's a commentary in one of the editions from the late 16th century, there's a commentary. And the commentary, uh, this is where it begins, quotes the entire text. So this is how we have the text. This text is actually quite similar to the Tango text, or it's not, even though it's not the same, it has a number of features that match the Tango text. For example, Oh, well, this is the beginning. Um, I, will, I will not talk about that. But here is an example for it. Uh, here you have, um, on this page, um, you have a section where the old man calls Zulu a general. He says, greetings, old general. And Zulu gets completely upset. Zulu, the Confucian disciple, why are you calling me a general? I'm a man of learning. And then the old man explains, like, yeah, but you're so arrogant. I didn't, I didn't presume that you were um, a man of learning. <laughs> um, and the text in the commentary that we've seen is very, very similar, actually. This is, this is a detail that's absent from the Zhuangzi or other early versions of this text. So here we have something that kind of is quite um, close. Now, I managed to find another version of this text in the case files from the Qing Court's Investigation of Secret Societies. This is, this is a 40 volume book or collection that came out just recently, and no library has it pretty much, including the National Library of China for some reason. They said, oh, we have it in Inner Mongolia, so no problem. You can go there and look at it. Like, I'm not going to Inner Mongolia to look at a book. Uh, but basically, finally, I was able to look at this and I found um, the text in it. It's the same text, 
interesting that this was reported by somebody who was arrested as being part of a secret society, and in his testimony he recorded this text as one of the uh, one of the things he received from his teacher. Um, so he memorized it, possibly because of the memorization. It doesn't exactly uh, fit um, the version that we've seen in the commentary. It's very close. Also, we don't have a title for it. He just recorded it um, from memory. This is also the end, um, asking Waltz whether you're a sage, and he says, indeed, I am. Um, all right. I, I also wanted to show some parts where we see very clear Buddhist influence, although, because uh, this is from the um, Flower Garland, Garland Sutra, although it doesn't make any sense in this context, so somehow it's inserted and um, it's very hard to interpret it. Now, so now we have this text in the commentary that's called Lao Jun Xin Tanji, so the record of the portable altar of the elderly Lord. Again, here we have a problem with um, Xin Tan, the character or the word preceding the word altar. Just like in the case of the Tango text, it should really be seen hand because already the Africa platform, it's already attested in the Chinese, uh, the earliest Chinese example in the Zhuangzi, but then uh, was, well, in the Tango, it's not Africa, and in these Chinese versions, it's not Africa either. But obviously, these two, the pronunciation of these two words were quite similar and possibly even more similar um, in spoken language. This is uh, Baxter's reconstruction of um, medieval Chinese. And then we have the Tangut, which is called Fu Zi He Tanji. So I'm um, basically, oh, we don't have, <laughs> why don't we have Tangut fonts? Fortunately, I did a PDF. Okay. So here, uh, the character in question, or the word in question, is this one, which um, is, I think, this was Gua in in Tangut, and uh, this is translated as Hua or peace, or to make peace. The problem is that actually this particular character, um, if you look up any dictionary, it just tells you to go to another character, this one, saying that it's the same as this one. And there's, the difference between these two is very small, actually. You can see that it's only a, that this left component is dragged underneath longer, and this one doesn't have that. So initially, I thought that maybe there's something else, and I wanted to look up the Africa, uh, apricot in Tangut, thinking that maybe this was the word for apricot, and, this, and it wasn't really an allograph for this one. Um, so in the timely pearl, you have this word, the bay, whatever, hie, and it's translated as lisien. Um, but the word for chestnut is also translated as the same thing, um, which is ch chestnut apricot. So that actually goes back to the idea that maybe the timely pearl wasn't reflecting how the Chinese people talked, or um, well, the Chinese Chinese of people at the time, and maybe it was a tangosized Chinese because words like chestnut apricot doesn't they don't really occur in the Chinese uh, context. But basically, we have the difference between the word xin and he. But, and it was um, Andrew West who suggested to me, actually, that maybe the change or the, the corruption of this word was actually in Chinese and not in Tango. So we have, if we look at variants of the character he, also in the Mokan Shoujian, which is Kitan uh, period, and uh, then we can see that we have variants that are actually quite similar to, uh, to the Chinese character for apricot. 
So it's possible, or probably, it's very likely that the sort of the change happened in Chinese before it was translated. So if I'm correct, then we actually have um, the, the original titles should be the, these. So the record of the elderly Lord at the every platform. And the Chinese, uh, the, the tango text should be record of the master at the every platform. So this one would be the Chinese text quoted in the secret society scripture. And this one was uh, the tango text. And in fact, you have images that appear from 1130, so only a few years after. They're attested only a few years after the date of the Tangutra manuscript. Um, from the, for example, the Dong uh, Ya which is which was compiled by um, a descendant of Confucius in about 1130. So this is a, uh, this has uh, an image with this title showing Confucius underneath apricot trees. And at the beginning, it has a short story, which is pretty much the same frame story what we have in the Tango text and in the Chinese secret society text. Later on, we even have the title, Fu Zi Xin Han Tu, in the uh, Song Dynasty uh, Encyclopedia, Shi Ling Wang Ti, from um, a little bit later. OK, we need to run through. Later on, I wrote an article about this, uh, which is still under embargo, but it will be freed one day. And, um, but later on, I found um, modern texts circulating, printed in the 20th century, which describe the same encounter, basically. So this is a third stage in the evolution of this text. And they appear on all these Chinese auction sites. They, they don't exist in any library for some reason. But I found five different copies on auction sites uh, with titles. You see that they differ in a radical, or Laozi is called Lao Jun, Kongzi is called, or well, is always called Kongzi, but Du is sometimes with the, with the water radical, sometimes it's within, without the radical. The title means Laozi saves or leads Confucius to salvation. So here are examples of this. So basically, we have these attested versions. So we have the first one is the Tango text. I should point out that these are not the exact same text, but a very, very similar text and a series of texts, so we, uh, which are closely related. So the first one would be the Tango one. So originally, it was called Fu Zi He Tang Jin, the Chinese version, but actually, the, the original title in Chinese probably was Fu Zi Xin Tan Ti. Then we have from the late 16th century a text um, called Lao Jun Xin Tan Ti. Then we have another version recorded from memory, but this was untitled. And then we have a mention also in the secret society files of a text where we don't have the text. And then finally we have these 20th century texts and some of them are actually, I believe, are still in use today in Taoist societies. But they're not on the web anywhere. Now, I'm running out of time, but I wanted to show you some examples how the Chinese text might help, you to, um, might help us to understand uh, the, the Tangut better, maybe. I mean, the, the Chinese text that, for example, the 20th century version of the, uh, the Chinese text might help us understand the, uh, the Tango text better. So we have Nye Hongyin's translation here about the cocoon. Well, we have Pichanov, which I translated into English. So they are like silkworm, which wraps its own body by spinning a cocoon. So Nye, uh, Professor Nye translated this completely differently. And um, the 20th century Chinese text is actually quite similar uh, to Pichanov's translation. And, quite similar to the, well, seemingly similar to the um, Tangled one. In Nia's translation, it was basically the understanding of um, this character that is different. And these two characters, they are uh, understood as abandoning and collecting. So here's another bit, the, my last example, about 
um, how I pitied the foolish person. In the foolish person, the foundations for love were born, and the foundations for greed and foolishness died. Again, Nia's translation is completely different. But then in the 20th century Chinese translation, it says um, the, the foolish person only knows um, the, the joys of being alive, probably Shengqian means in this case to be alive. How could he know sort of the, the pain of the samsara after, that comes after his death? So actually in this case, even the, the modern version, 20th century Chinese version is different. And um, it probably it would be interesting to kind of to work out how this is related uh, to the uh, original Tangled, not original, but to the Tangled text. 